Welcome to the Better Together podcast. We look for ways we can work together to advance the gospel of Jesus Christ. Today we have with us Josh Chapman and Bradley Mercer. These two are missionaries actually in, you might say, in Missouri. They work with churches in Missouri, and I'll get them to explain in a minute about why we call them missionaries, but they're doing what they can to reach people from all over the world. If you've been listening to this podcast as of late, you've heard us talk about this Reaching International Students Task Force. And so I'm hoping you've heard the first podcast with Kurt Holland. If you haven't, take a listen to that when you get a chance. And there are three more podcasts that follow this talking about different things that churches can do to get involved to reach international students. So first of all, Josh and Bradley, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Now, I know uh, people are probably wondering, what, why do we need to be focused on missions in the United States? They know we have Free Will Baptist North American Ministry, so they know we need to start new churches. But really, there's a great need to reach international students, aren't there? Yes, there is. And um, you, said, you, you said that number, almost a million international students in the country and um, I, I think to, I guess, be brutally honest, I think there's the numbers of international students are growing exponentially more than the willing people to actually reach them and see them. So um, I, I think there's a great need there here here in the United States in our own backyards. That's great. And Josh, where you're at in Rolla, I'm sure a lot of people would not think of a lot of international students, but you've got international students from China, from India. Where else are people coming from in your area? Yeah, we have over 89 different uh, people groups made up, and most of those from from different nations. And so, yeah, a lot of a lot of Chinese and Indian with computer science, but we also have a lot of Middle Eastern with petroleum, um, a lot of Africans with mining, and then uh, just people from all over in a in a in a mix from South America to Asia to um, Europe and and around. I'm sure most people driving through Rolla, Missouri would never know there's that many countries right there at that particular spot. And University of Missouri, I'm sure a lot of people driving through and by, driving by the Mizzou campus wouldn't think that. I know, Bradley, um, you used to live close to NC State, 6,000 international students mm -hmm. um, from all over the world there. So we've really got an opportunity. So in the first podcast, Kurt talked about, just kind of introduced what your task force is trying to do. He talked about some level one strategies where churches might get involved in trying to interact with colleges and uh, do what they could to reach students there. But you guys focus a lot on level two. And so talk to our folks about what it is they might do at level two of this little um, chart you guys have developed how they might be able to engage international students. And we'll start with you, Josh, since you guys have kind of been through this a little bit later. We're going to have a podcast where we talk to you and and uh, Farron Tebow, the pastor there, about Level 5. But tell us a bit about what you all see and what churches could do at Level 2. Yeah, so Level 2 is primarily about um, addressing a need as an on-ramp to, to ministry and gospel conversations. And so many students who come here um, need English. Um, and most of them are very proficient, but they just need help learning more about English and, and American culture and, um, and the various words and slang terms and, and things that they hear. And so a very easy way in which we can when can help a need and, and offer a way to, um, to minister to people is through English conversational classes, um, through maybe more formal English classes, um, and maybe that doesn't look like English classes. Maybe that looks like another need they have where you go out and you help train people to, to drive a car so they can get their license um, or to learn a different skill or, you know, go through their resume with them if they need help in, in order to find a job. And so there's various needs as a church um, can tackle um, with just basic skills that we already have as, as U.S. citizens, um, but things that can, can offer open doors for us in order to share the gospel with them. And Bradley's doing a great job already getting a lot of this off the ground in Columbia. And so I'm excited for him to talk a little bit about that. And already just some of the stories in the few short months that he's been there um, that have been a prime example of, of this at work. So Bradley, you're in your second semester, really. They're just getting going on the second semester. And what Josh is, I think, alluding to is how quickly 
when someone is really focused on international students, you can really quickly be able to have opportunities like this. Oh yeah. Um, some things you would never even, you would never even think right off the bat. Um, just so many different ways, practical ways that we can reach and build trust with international students, because that's really what they, that's really how you're going to reach them is building a trust by serving them um, and just being there for them. You know, whether it be, I mean, Josh went through some of the examples, like whether it be taking them to the grocery store, um, picking them up from the airport, taking them to the airport, um, just making sure you're the first person that they meet whenever they finally move here um, from their country to get that initial point of contact. Um, so, so many different ways uh, that I'm learning, you can actually reach these students. That's great. And so it's important for, I think, all of us to remember they are separated from their families, depending upon their degree program. It usually, it, at least two years, we think about a master's degree, but it's more like it's probably going to be at least three. And for some of them all the way out to six, they can't go home for Christmas and Thanksgiving and all the rest of it and don't know anything about the culture that they're in. So I think what I hear you all saying is you look for ways you can meet needs. We talked about this a little bit in the first podcast, how you want to try to meet someone on the campus there with international affairs. Uh, I know that you all have a little survey and folks could email us, Bradley. We would send out that little survey that you used at the University of Missouri, where you just ask the college, what kinds of needs do you have, right? Um, and, and then you kind of analyze that. And what I'm hearing you all say is you figure out what the needs are and you proceed from there. Yeah. Um, I mean, whenever I, whenever I first moved here, I, I mean, I, I didn't really know what to do. Uh, best, best thing I'd, best thing I could think of was to just go there and ask. <laughs> um, so I developed uh, an open-ended question survey with, uh, I think it was 10 or 11 questions. And I began to ask uh, people who already had the influence over international students. Um, Cause remember, you're not, you're probably not the only one that's trying to help them um, wherever you're at, Maybe, whether it be from a religious standpoint or not, you're not the only one that's trying to help them. Um, people like scholars asking scholars and asking students that I already had the chance of knowing, um, kind of what their basic needs are and how we can best serve them. Um, and the, the, like we talked about already, the list goes on and on and on and on and on of things that you can do to, um, to help meet those needs. And so there's a lot of needs and yes, we want as many people as possible to help. There could be other campus ministries that you could come alongside. And I know you all have done that where you're at, Josh, where you've been able to work with some of the campus ministries. Talk a little mm -hmm. bit about that and how churches can come alongside and get involved with that. Yeah, that's a great um, a great observation. Uh, it's just really essentially coming alongside and helping somebody. A lot of times we think that we have to reinvent the wheel, and that's really not the case. Like Bradley said, somebody's already doing it. And yeah. whether they're, uh, maybe they're just doing it out of a desire to help. And maybe it's out of the International Affairs Office as a part of their job. Um, but regardless, very rarely are they going to turn down extra volunteer help. And so instead of just trying to start something from scratch, if there's already an existing program there that's helping address these needs, come alongside with them, help them get your foot in the door. Um, and in our case, uh, and how that worked for us, is we came alongside uh, an English conversation program here at Missouri s and and another missions pastor from a different church, a non freely Baptist church. He was already um, volunteering with them and in that capacity. And because of that, we opened doors probably five years sooner than we had would have had we tried to do it all on our own. And so in this and in this ministry, yeah, look for what's there, see the need, see the groups that are already approaching that. And if you can align with them and help them come along and volunteer with them, it's going to get you light years ahead of where you could be otherwise. And so, yeah, that's a, that's a great point there, Dr. Absolutely. Drake. So you've got your international affairs people on the college campus. You may have other ministries or other organizations on the campus as well. Part of, and at level one, uh, Kurt talked about, you may help move in. You may provide a meal on certain holidays. Part of what you all discuss at level two is more emphasis on English. And so, why is it so important if you actually have English teachers in your church? How might you leverage something along those lines? Well, I, if I if I can if I can be the first to talk about this, I, I think um, international students they come from their home countries looking for a lot of things. Um, 
they come looking for, you know, education and all that, but it's good. It's really hard to live here in America. Um, it's really hard to live here in America, or, you know, do your career with excellence without English, you know, and some, some countries, they, 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 they learn that growing up, but some don't, and they have no idea <laughs> that they have no idea that, um, no idea how, how much, how big the need is for English. So, um, one of the things that, that was one of the initial needs that I saw right off the bat. And that's kind of the, that's kind of the route that I took in, in, in helping international students meet their English needs. And, um, doing that just, um, provides them an opportunity for, uh, success in the future. So our listeners are thinking, so they've come to the country and they don't even know how to speak English. Well, they passed TOLF. So, they had to have a certain English proficiency, but it's one thing to read and take a test. It's also another thing to, you know, read books. But what I hear you guys saying is it's, it, you, you're conversing with folks. And mm -hmm. uh, I think you all mentioned at the beginning, there's idioms and there's uh, all mm -hmm. kinds of things that are hard. There's social cues and so forth. And so what you're trying to do is help them with that, uh, help them with that as well. And then what about, you know, as far as, classes at the church. I know that's part of level two as well. Uh, I think you all talk about choose your textbooks, choose your choose a day and so forth. You have anything else? Cause you guys have been doing this a, a bit for a while there, Josh, you and uh, at Rolla. Yeah, we uh, uh, again partnered with the other pastor that already had an existing English course and primarily went through different conversational texts and that pertained to anything from American baseball to um, food, you know, and desserts. And with those, the cool opportunities and memories that we made in that, you know, is is we're in Cardinal country. And so when we talk about American baseball in the summer, we're able to take them up to a Cardinal game and they get to experience that. Um, but there's a lot more other uh, good organizations and programs that, that offer texts that may be a little bit more formal, um, things that can be maybe even a little more gospel driven or biblical in some ways. And so Bradley's got a great example of what he's doing with that. You want to yeah, share that? If, if I can give if I can give an example, um, one thing that we started at Rejoice Church was something called Let's Speak English. And it, it just it's every Tuesday night from seven to eight thirty. And it gives we, we, we provide transportation to it because most students can't get around and um, it's really hard for them to get around without a car. So we go pick them up and they they come and they just practice their general English conversation skills through speed conversations, two minutes, you sit in front of a single person, you talk about something for two minutes and you get up, switch chairs, kind of, kind of like the whole speed dating concept. And then we play games that kind of orient around English speaking or English words. For example, we, we played giant Scrabble. We played giant Scrabble the other night and um, these students, they would spell out a word. And if they didn't understand what it meant or how you could use it in a sentence, we would pause and be like, Hey, this word means this. And then, at the end, we try to give them kind of like a cultural experience, whether it be like um, American slang or idioms. And I, I laughed whenever you said idioms, because literally last night, that was the, that was the thing that we did. We did American idioms because they don't know what those mean. You you throw up an idiom on the screen and their their eyes get real big and they don't know. <laughs> it's it's really funny to see. But um, in doing so, in doing so, the initial point of Let's Speak English was to kind of create a platform for you to build relationships with the students that come. So you can have a smaller group because a lot of the guys that I've met through let's speak English are now on a Bible study. That's on Monday nights from seven to eight 30 or seven to eight o'clock at, at, on campus. So meeting the students at let's speak English, helping them meet their needs through English builds that trust. And then you can have them in a smaller setting where they trust you enough to actually open God's word um, together, even if they're not believers, which is so incredibly awesome. Mm hmm. So you're just you're starting out, you're building a relationship. You're also really you're being seen as a helper. You know, there's there's a great need here and you're helping me and I just can't help but kind of like you and kind of wonder why is it you're helping me for nothing in return. So you're building a relationship is is what you're saying. And that often leads opportunities to share the gospel, to read the Bible and other situations uh, to reach them with the gospel, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great, easy, low impact way for your people to get involved as well. Because I mean, we all speak English to some degree. Maybe your English isn't as perfect as you'd think, or maybe you don't think you can be an English teacher, but uh, but you can 
converse with people probably pretty well. And, and that's, that's really all we need. And, and with let's speak English, you know, that's really all Bradley's looking for is just willing volunteers to come and, and chat about these things. Absolutely. Absolutely. And anyone who's ever tried to learn a, another language, know it's one thing to hear it. It's one thing to read it, but that conversation is, is hard. And, and so what you're doing is providing that opportunity for them to really get that language down. Hey, well, good job guys. Thank you for what you're, what you're doing. Thank you for taking the time to share with us. And if folks are interested in learning more, I encourage you to email Kurt Holland, Kurt at im.org. We'll also include the survey that Bradley mentioned that he took to the International Affairs Office and said, hey, uh, and and Bradley, really, did you just do that as a question and answer thing going and talking to him? Yeah. So, I I mean, I, I sent it to some, but most of it was actually in person. Um, and I, I recorded the answers myself. And I think that for me, that worked the best because you can send something to somebody and it gets kind of get lost in their email. Uh, but right. if you actually just go up there and approach them and ask them the 10 questions yourself, you get to report it. Um, and the, you're building a relationship. They're seeing Bradley's okay guy. You know, you're start, you're on the campus. And so right. if, I can, if I can also make a plug uh, with the whole let's speak English thing, if you want like a practical example to actually see for yourself what what all God is doing with it, follow the Axis 573 on Instagram because we're at it's constantly it's constantly updating and we have updates every week. We're doing interviews of students so how how much they love let's speak oh, English and it's it's so cool. Um it's so cool. So again, it's called the Axis 573. 573 is the area code of Columbia. So um, follow that on Instagram. Be able to see it. what it what it does and and they'll they'll be able to see how it's helped them, right, Bradley? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and maybe even inspire, you know, your church to get involved in some of these ways as well and see that it's really not that difficult. If you see Bradley's doing it over there and um, they figured out a good way to do it, you know, sometimes that just sort of spurs creation um, in your own body and, um, and excitement. So, yeah, definitely follow that. They're doing some cool things, and Bradley's got a lot of cool stories. Um, and if this is something you want to pursue, I highly encourage you to reach out to Bradley, reach out to Tyler, reach out to us. Um, because there's also some some do's and there's some do nots. And so if we can help you sort of figure those out from the get go, uh, you'll just be a lot, a lot further ahead. That's great. And you mentioned the Absolutely. do nots. You've got so many different cultures uh, in one setting. So there are a lot of do nots, but we're, we're trying to follow the Lord. We're trying to learn as much as we can, kind of practice in 1 Corinthians 9, putting ourselves in the shoes of others. Oh, it can help us out a lot. Well, yeah. thank you all for, for joining us today. Thank you for sharing. We so appreciate what you're doing. Yeah. And one thank more you. thing, Dr. If you don't mind. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of people who are overseas and need support. Yeah. We have a few people that are here in the States and need support. And Bradley's one of these guys. And so if you have some money and you have a generous heart and you want to give, please, please, please feel free just to, to shoot that over to Access Ministries to him and um, his future wife, Madison. He'll be joining him. And I guarantee you, it's it's not a lost cause. You will see the fruit um, of his labor and, and ultimately the fruit of your generous heart and your your donations. So please, please consider doing that if you can. Good job, Thanks, Josh. So don't forget Bradley and soon to be married to Madison. So they need some yeah. they could really use your assistance in this area. And so they're impacting people from all over the world in this one spot. And so pray about this ministry. Pray for your own involvement. We, uh, I encourage you also follow that Instagram account, maybe use one of those, one of those videos to help people see what could be and how, how it could, in, how they could impact folks with the gospel of Christ. So check that out. Yeah. Take this podcast. If you can share it with anyone you think might benefit. Remember every little thing we do, it really does matter. When we truly all come together, we are better together. Thank mm -hmm. you for joining us today.